Hey, what's up, Budos? And welcome to the, this new episode of La Grotte du Barbu. Today is episode 164. So clever, part 2. In the last episode, we made the whole structure of this foam and wood weapon. And now we will shape the foam, we will paint it, we will weather it, and we will try to finish it so that the friend Tempen Digital cat can wear it with her Halloween costumes. Let's go! Come on, let's put an end to the structure build by gluing the last piece of foam to the handle. Now that is done, we will start shaping the handle of our mighty weapon with some sandpaper. We go from an 80 grit to a 120 grit and shape slowly the curve on the handle. Then, I take out my sharp cutter and cut out two pieces of foam to ease the transition from wood to foam. When I glued everything on the blade, the alignment was not perfect. Nothing dramatic, but I have to recut some of the teeth of the blade to make them okay. I put out a new blade. It's important to have a clean and super sharp blade to have clean cuts. After cutting the foam with the scalpel and cutter, I'm going to use my Dremel with some sandpaper roll. It's easy to take down the foam with the Dremel. Easy as a hot knife into butter. The only drawback is the nasty black dust coming from the foam and going literally everywhere. I use the Dremel to adjust the foam and ease the curves and spike of the blade to make them more natural, as if I was carving them from clay. I don't own an air gun, so to seal the foam I use my blowtorch. A little bit overkill, but works fine. I had some more details and we will be able to go to the next stage of the build. To make the white fabric strips, I'm gonna tear up an old t-shirt. First by cutting it into a rectangular shape. Then I cut strips, leaving a few centimeters on one hand. It's important to do that and we'll see why in a minute. When all strips have been cut, I'm gonna cut the remaining fabric in diagonal so that the strips are made into one giant strip of white fabric. I have to cut and glue the last bit of foam on my handle, so I test the length, adjust it, use some contact cement that I apply with my hands. Not the best decision of the day, I must admit. When the glue is dried, I assemble the pieces and fill in the gap with some CA glue and a spray kicker. I love this stuff. Now let's paint the weapon. Away from camera, I sprayed two coats of black paint and I'm gonna distress it to make it look more metallic. I use some standard basic paint and mix white and black to have a grey color. Then I'm gonna apply with a dry brush on all the weapon edges and give it a used and old look. For the handle, I'm trying to do a brown, but it's more or less more green than brown. 
and I use the same technique to give the handle an used look. Now that the base color has been applied, I'm gonna glue the white strip fabric. Nothing fancy here, some hot glue and just applying the fabric to the handle. I do the same thing on a blade. I try to stay as close as possible to the reference picture I got and try to have a chaotic pattern with the fabric strips. Now we'll do some weathering by mixing paint to get a brown. I mix yellow and red to get some orange and add a little bit of blue to have the right color. Here I'm gonna also do a dry brush with just a little bit of paint to get over the white fabric and make it look whole. The effect is really cool, gives the weapon some dark path and shadows and bring out the details, giving a much more realistic look to the handle. I apply the same technique with a lighter brown to end up with a more gory red brown. By adding layers of different paint colors, you give a depth to your build and make it look more and more real. Now that the handle is finished, let's do the same stuff on the blade. First, with the brown. On this part of the weapon, I'll be less gentle with the reddish brown as it's supposed to chop heads and body parts. I'm lastly applying a few gory coats of red on the spikes to make it more gruesome. A few coats of spray matte finish to make sure the paint stay on and here it is. After assembling the two parts and a few red spray can sprays on the spikes, the weapon is ready. I've never played Bloodborne the game, but it seemed close enough and I'm quite happy with the result. So, the result is kind of, um, it's kind of okay. Uh, it's not the result I was hoping for, but I learned a lot. I learned about the EVA foam, I learned about the structure, I learned about painting, I learned, I learned about finishing, weathering and stuff like this. And it's kind of the first time I did this kind of job. So, I was kind of pleased, hopefully, the design of the saw cleaver is kind of um, damaged and with the little bandage um, it, it kind of hides most of the mistakes I've done. So 
for the time I spend on it and the money which would mean like a few hours and 30 euros it's kind of a real successful successful project as usual if you have any question or insult you know how to reach me you can email me tweet me hit me on facebook instagram put some comments and don't forget to subscribe i pull out a video every week so that's it for today's episode i had a real blast working on that project and i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to make stuff May the beard be with you. See you soon.